And the globalists hope to start a civil war. It's even come out in Democrat memos where they stage false flags, blame on the liberty movement, march the military and police out against us, start gun confiscation. That will trigger real resistance. They'll keep staging atrocities to blame it on us. And they think we're so stupid from all their TVs and movies where they show militia always fighting the police. And they always archetypally brand it that during a civil war, the Patriot militia will kill police. If a civil war kicks off, that's only if they're firing at you or trying to take you off to a facility. Everybody needs to think about who the enemy is, who the real occupiers are that are running this thing. They think you're so stupid, they put a narrative out that we're all just going to kill each other. No, that's not going to happen, George Soros. That's not going to happen. All of you people that have been part of this, all the czars, 10 czars that have endorsed Mao Zedong on television, who killed 80 million people plus, that's the Chinese numbers, CIA says 65 million or whatever. All of you people that have tried to bankrupt the economy, endorse Cloward and Piven, that is sedition, that is sabotage. All of you that are saying you'll cut off emergency funds to states that don't endorse carbon taxes, that's terrorism. You people have committed legions of crimes, lowering our borders. By the classical sense, you are the ultimate criminal destroyer usurpers. You will not get away with it. And that's why by the thousands, the elite are buying redoubts. I told you this three years ago when Cameron left and everybody made fun of me, but now it's been in The Guardian and other places that know Hollywood, the billionaires, they're leaving. They're leaving Israel. They're leaving the U.S. They're leaving Europe. They're going to the eastern areas of the Pacific. They are going to areas like New Zealand. Just pretending on what part of the world you're in, you can say it's the other part of the Pacific. It just doesn't even, it's, just, it's just so horrible. And are we smart enough to figure this out and just not do this? I mean, I don't want the Civil War. Now, our guest was coming on about the William Benny interview, the former technical director of the National Security Agency. We'll go over some of those slides for TV viewers, infowars.com forward slash show. But then I'm also going to get his takes. He's a smart guy. Um, James Knox, on Russia has constructed massive underground shelters in anticipation of nuclear war. I want to tie this into the plane crash at the bottom of the hour. They're now saying that passengers shrieked as co-pilot deliberately crashed the jet after he'd locked the other pilot, the main pilot, out. Notice it was a hardened cockpit door. See how any move of security can then cause the opposite effect and be used. Just like national security has been used to take our liberties, the main threat is the national security COG grid. It's what can be used to take over the country and is being used. I call it a reverse Valkyrie. In Operation Valkyrie, some of the German high command tried to kill Hitler, not because they even were sad about what Hitler had done to minorities, but because they knew he was going to wreck Germany more and kill tens of millions more Germans. At that time, they'd already lost about 16 million Germans. And so when they tried to take Hitler out, it was because they were German patriots. They cared about Germany. And they used the COG plan that Hitler had for martial law to take over the military if they tried something to reverse engineer that and use that COG system to overthrow Hitler. But it didn't work. COG is what ends the government. It is what ends the republic. Continuity of government is the system to take it over. And remember what William Benny said. Since the early 90s, he tried to get the NSA to have taps on its internal systems to see who accessed it. That's the first thing you do. Everybody at my office has an access code so we know when they come. They have a beeper that has their code so we know when they came. That's not a police state. It's our internal operation. It's our internal security. That's good, where everybody takes care of their security. The first thing you do is monitor who comes on that network. They spy on everything but the NSA and who goes on the restricted networks so foreign governments and contractors can steal everything. 
Now, if you're at the top of the pyramid, you're at the top, like William Benny, the equivalent of a multi-star general. Then you've got at the bottom of the pyramid people like James Knox, a master telecommunications engineer who, you know, just like Snowden had access to just massive amounts of stuff. He won't get into some of that, but he was talking about and confirming the Snowden documents when they came out, just about the hubs he put in and puts in. And this guy goes over multi-states doing this. So see, the bottom of the pyramid is the top of the pyramid and vice versa. Police are the top of the pyramid, even though they're the bottom of the pyramid, because you're there where the rubber meets the road. And you'll also go through the hell of these policies if they go through. James Knox is in, in 1984, joined the U.S. Army as part of the last class of 60, uh, 26 Vs. He was honorably discharged. In 1990, he worked as an assistant comsec uh, custodian, ran ARFCOs, Lethal Force Authorization Transport of Theater, KEMAT, repaired and maintained TS Communications Center and equipment, performed destruction duties, Tempest certification. After discharge, he joined the commercial market, providing turnkey communications networks and maintenance throughout the United States. And so part of that was putting in the NSA snoop hubs, because that's what goes in everything, folks. He holds multiple certifications, DC to daylight, uh, he likes to say he has done networks encompassing wireline to microwave to fiber optics to both commercial and government clients. And it was guys like him, and even more high level, who told me, no, your cable box listens to you. No, everything has spy hubs. Everything has takeover boxes. And then they would show me the documents. And and, and we're going to skip this network break so we have plenty of time to talk to him. Only break I'm skipping today, folks. And, I've had, and I haven't been plugging today, so support us at InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, but YouTube.com forward slash James Knox Dark uh, Camo, Twitter, Dark Camo, and he joins us right now. James, I want to get into Benny first, uh, and then I want to get into this Russia situation, because I promise, and I want to get your take on it as well. But uh, first off, what do you make of the massive acceleration of 10-state open infiltration takeover drills, and then now their huge psyop saying it's for overseas when their own documents admit uh, it's for uh, domestic operations, and then we have legions of other documents admitting that it's exponentially going up. They say in the Houston Chronicle and in all these other publications that Jones has been warning about this for decades. It never happens. D has it the takeover pretty much happened, uh, James? Yeah, and then, you know, from my point of view, I've always seen it that nobody really understands that since 9-11, uh, We've been under a state of, of uh, emergency, which uh, invoked continuity of government to some unknown state. So those things are going on. Um, I don't have any actual facts. I can certainly give you my uh, feeling uh, as to what they've done. And I see this as a psyop because if you notice in this, uh, document, there's no enemy. Texas is a hostile place, but it never says why Texas is hostile. And that's where I think we need to realize that they are, their words, mastering the human domain. Well, when we talk about the sheep and the takeover, that's exactly what this is. Um, how do you get a citizenry to uh, interact with these folks by getting these folks to interact with the, the civilians such that, hey, I'm with the government, and I am going to help. And, of course, in early yeah. missions, they are actually helping, but the point is it's a mission creep jurisdictional takeover for the National Stability Force that is really the takeover force in the RAND Corporation's master admission. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's an in-your-face, well, at least now, but that uh, positive commentatus is... Uh, no longer with us. Yeah, notice they would always say to me 15 years ago, 20 years ago, posse comitatus, it'll never happen. Even when it was happening, people were denying it. Now it's like, yeah, we got rid of posse comitatus, and we're getting rid of due process, and yeah, we'll disappear you. Exactly, and I've got a little tidbit 
that I'm looking into uh, from a buddy of mine that this things like Jade Helm um, may have been going on and likely have been going on CONUS for some period of time, much longer than we are presently aware. Absolutely. It's been going on since the 60s. Uh, I mean, that's in my films, but it's exponentially going up now. Before, they were beta testing just to see if they could get the military to do it, testing how they sell troops on doing it. So so really, it's about brainwashing the, the military first to accept it and to think it's a good mission because most of these are good men and women. And then it's about conditioning the locals to do it. It's the exponential ramping up. I mean, let's say it was a one on a Richter scale under Reagan. And then let's say it was about a six under Clinton, then it scaled back a little bit under Bush, but then the police state and other areas expanded. Under Obama, it's gone to like a seven, eight, or nine. I mean, it's just it's just shooting up right now, James. Oh, I would I would absolutely agree. And and I think it's the fact that they're I was kind of alluding to the, the tier one architecture uh, being involved. Um, yeah, let's get into NSA. Fact, you really uh, uh, liked uh, the uh, William Benny NSA uh, technical director interview last week and contacted us, and I was really happy to get you on the show because I was already wanting to. Uh, get, give us your take on that interview from the top view and then from the ground view where you're at. Well, William Benny, I, you know, I have – nothing but respect for that man and think he's a hero um you know he he exposed uh the way i see benny i think he was involved in carnivore uh to what extent i'm not sure uh, he's, no he basically you know he, he told me at dinner he said i don't like to brag but i basically directed the building all of it he said the infrastructure i designed and he doesn't like to okay, brag but so, the guy's a master genius oh affirmative um so I, I think ThinThread then was uh, a device to basically get around the objections of the congressional hearings uh, of the carnivore device, um, which then basically utilizing Talia and that access that had been put in place by uh, Brother Bill, Flick Willie, um, turned everything on us and all the infrastructure was there because what he did with Talia, creating that access, that's access to each and every uh, pop, point of presence, or circuit in the United States at a minimum. And uh a kind of treasure map is something he talked about that I would like to discuss. But yeah, we're putting the slides on screen now. right now. Bre break it down and then specifically talk about on the ground how how the NSA jacks into everything. Well, basically, I mean, that's as simple. Uh, you can take a piece of fiber and you can either, you know, you can cut it, connectorize it, put it in a patch panel, and then just put a prism in front of it, and you basically split that signal. Um, and then account for the minor uh, loss of that splitter. And then you run fiber over to the NSA collection point or that point of presence, and then the natural traffic flow just continues through. It is absolutely, uh, you can't see it. That's why I said there's no solution for it, because... And that was the complaint about carnivore. Uh, what they, they're doing is they're just slurping everything in and telling you that, hey, I'll filter it. You know, trust us. We're not going to look at that stuff. And now we see that what has happened. Um, and that gets into treasure map. And that literally scares me to death. And um, I can get into that. But yes, you know, break down treasure map. Happened. Break down treasure okay, now, map. If, if we look at all those access points that you had just had up, you can figure those are places that that's happening, that that data is being slurped up and all of it. You know, think of it like the entire mission bitstream, which is going to be everything, you know, to include the metadata, you know, the unused portion, just that whole piece of fiber. And they're taking everything that's on there and they're storing it. 
and facilities uh, like, uh, what is it, uh, something bluff in Utah. Uh, I always want to say Pine Bluff because Pine Bluff is uh, our sister, uh, the Five Eyes down in uh, Alice Springs, Australia. Um, if you look at Fort Meade, basically Alice Springs is much like that. And then you have other Five Eyes areas that are those things. Matter of fact, uh, my grandfather was the one that built uh, the uh, CONUS um, bases for those uh, satellite dishes for that network. And it was actually Echelon at that time, and that's not, uh, you know, that's no longer classified. But in talking about Echelon, that's a system based on keywords. And that's a good way. You know, that, as William Benny said, creates a target-rich environment, where if you're slurping everything in, you have just this mad amount of data that you then have to try to uh, decipher and figure out what is, you know. And there's a lot of points here. Not. Number one, we're just calmly talking about the fact that they're listening and recording and saving basically everything. It's totally illegal. They admit that our Internet is a lot slower because they are slurping it. Uh, it costs hundreds of millions of dollars to do this every few years. Uh, it is converting our economy into the watchers and the watched. And they've been caught and aren't in trouble and then major corporations are all basically surveilling people as well and selling the data, and then gaming economies with the information. So many people, and what do you say to this, uh, James Knox? So many people say, if you have nothing to hide, what's the problem? Well, w you see people that put what they get for Christmas and that they're going out of town on Facebook, and then they get robbed because the thieves use that intel. You lock your door not because you're a bad person at night, but because it's just another measure of security. It's like saying, you shouldn't lock your door, you're a criminal, or you shouldn't lower your blinds. I lower the blinds because the, I want to sleep past 6, 30. You know, it, I mean, it's this mental illness. How have we gotten this far? Uh, liberalism. Um, collectivism. Um, this, communism. Um, but that, I would diverge into something else there. To me, how have we got here? It, it's uh, it's a psyop. People have been led to believe um, that all these things are good. They make your life easier. Um, it's really been fed to us on a uh, you know on a platter of convenience, and everybody was so sure that it couldn't happen here. And with what you just said. You know, it doesn't say any of that in the Constitution. The Constitution basically says the opposite. It says, you know what? It's none of your business. If I want to stand on top of Half Dome in Yosemite and make gurgling sounds and talk to the clouds and act like a fruitcake, I can do that. Why? It doesn't matter. It's nobody's business. That's America. If I want to be a, uh, you know, whatever religion. Um, it's none of their know, business. Let's come back and talk about this and talk about what Benny kept hammering. I want to get your take okay. on this, that no one's allowed to see who goes on the NSA network. I mean, that must totally open it up then to infiltration and hackers. That is the most insane thing because obviously the insiders don't want people knowing what they're doing. So the criminals can get away with this. They've left us wide open. It's the perfect plan to destroy us, in my view. Stay with us. James Knox is our guest. Uh, he's got a hurt back right now, so that's why he sounds a little bit uh, subdued. I think I should throw that out there. We appreciate him still coming on today. Uh, boy, I had my back out last year as well. It is not fun. Uh, so we'll definitely pray, pray for him on that front. Uh, but uh, James Knox is our guest, really smart guy. I like to have him on occasionally just to get his his breakdown on things. Uh, the federal taxes have hit record through February. Government still runs a $386 billion deficit, though, for the month. And uh, federal taxes uh, through February this year is at 
$185 billion, $613 million. Inflation-adjusted federal tax revenues hit record in the first five months of fiscal year 2015, but the federal government still ran a $36 billion deficit during the same time, according to the monthly Treasury statement. It's out of CNS News. And now Obama wants executive action on tax increases. When the big mega banks and companies look it up, they don't pay taxes. Because <laughs> they write the laws, that creature Warren Buffett. Uh, briefly, we don't fund ourselves with tax money. And we don't have big corporate sponsors. Uh, the networks get some of those. But that's the network funding itself. Um, eating a piece of food during the break, getting that out of my lip. We need your financial support. And we try to bring you the very best uh, products to do that at the very lowest prices. And we are almost sold out. Weldon tells me a day or two and it'll be gone. If you want to get your free bottle of Ancient Defense uh, Super Herbal Booster, uh, it's $14.95, but you can get a free bottle of it with the bottles of Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine. There's a professional wrestler and actor that I'm not going to say his name yet who got a bunch of this and let us know that he's lost, I think, 40-plus pounds. He wanted to see if we were full of it. And he's going to be coming on the show soon, 40-plus pounds in a matter of a couple months, doing the same exercise, taking the iodine and the Super Mel Vitality and other products, and then he's not sure which one's doing it. It's all doing it. I mean, I can't tell you which one of these is the best because I take them all. But I know I lost, I already lost like 30-something pounds, over the last few years working out and changing my diet some and then taking Beyond Tangy Tangerine and stuff. And then I lost another 10, 15 or so just going on the iodine alone, the truly pure, clean iodine. Still consult your doctor, though, because it, it, it'll detox. It'll do stuff to your thyroid. It's, it's, it isn't a game. I mean, it's serious. But because it's open source, they can't patent it so they don't turn it into a drug. An orange is a drug, folks. You don't get vitamin C. You, you know, you get scurvy. Same deal. But they can't patent it. Well, I guess Monsanto can change it and then patent it, uh, so they don't call it a drug. The point is, winter sun vitamin D3 is basically a base of all your hormones. Got to have that. This is the organic supercharged form. The nation eyed on all of it. Infowarslife.com, Infowarsstore.com, or call toll-free 888-253-3139. And I really want to thank you all for your support. You're getting great pro-gun T-shirts, pro-liberty T-shirts, made in America. We also have another section, not made in America, if you want something cheaper. Um, we also have the water filtration systems, books, films, shortwave radios, very low prices, high quality, non-GMO seeds, uh, really a lot of fabulous products at InfoWarsStore.com is the big master site. Then has sub-directives like Maiden1776.com, InfoWarsLife.com, and other areas. We have the InfoWars Seed Center. Now is the spring and summer. These are the very lowest prices on eight different companies that we've used that have the highest reviews that we've checked into, and we sell it at the price or lower that they sell it for. That's our pledge. So the InfoWars Seed Center, buy your seeds from us, shop with the good guys, InfoWarsLife.com. Uh, Molon Labe belt buckles. This is the second generation of those because uh, each one, each design is, is original and then it changes. Those are close to selling out. InfoWarsStore.com or MadeIn1776.com. Going back to James Knox, finishing up on the whole NSA front, that I want to shift gears with him and get his take on some other issues. Where do you see this fight going? I mean, we've got some good news here. House effort would completely dismantle Patriot Act. Uh, it's uh, bipartisan. Mark Pokin of Wisconsin and Thomas Massey of Republican of Kentucky uh, yesterday unveiled their Surveillance State Repeal Act. Finally, a bill with a truthful name, Surveillance State Repeal Act, which would overhaul American spy powers unlike any other effort to reform the National Security Agency. This isn't just tinkering around the edges, Pokin said during Capitol Hill briefing on legislation. This is a meaningful overhaul of the system. Yeah, they, they estimate that just the spy grids between about 15 different agencies is $100 billion out of the giant budget. And that's why, just like the movie Enemy of the State, they have killed people who try to do this. So pray for those congressmen. The bill will completely repeal the Patriot Act, sweeping national security law passed in the days after September 11th. That'll gut the NSA's takeover, as well as the 2008 FISA Amendments Act. Uh, so this is really, really exciting. What do you make of that? There's some other positive news here today. I meant to cover this at the start of the show. 
A House uh, revives bill to completely repeal the Patriot Act, dismantle NSA spying. Uh, Kansas to join states allowing concealed guns without permits. A lot of other great stuff like that. Uh, so th there's a lot of positive stuff uh, going on, James, and people are voting with their dollars, destroying McDonald's and other globalist soft kill operations. I mean, we're seeing some positive things happen. Where do you see the battle right now if, if this was a football game? Well, I think uh, I think we're definitely moving the ball because people are starting to wake up and, and, and understand. And thank you for what you said. By the way, it's the voice, not the mind. Um, and actually, L5 is fractured as I speak. So I know. Um, you sent us a shot of the x-ray. Unbelievable. I do appreciate that. You know, hey, you want thing, us to show the x-ray um, on TV? <laughs> oh, sure. Go ahead. It's, uh, it's just kind of a dramatic image. Well, I'm, I'm surprised uh, you can even talk, man. When my back was just thrown out shooting a 50 cal, like 100 rounds hand hell, when the spine flipped the other way, I mean, it was excruciating until the chiropractor finally got it back. But it felt like I was dying yeah, when they were putting I, it back. I don't shoot the 50 anymore. I, I just stick with my 3378. That's about all I can handle. Is that a Lapua? Um, no, it's actually a 3378 Weatherby. It's, uh, it's the fastest of the 30s. It'll do a uh, 180 grain cartridge wow. at uh, 3450. Wow. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's yeah, I got to say, I'm not a very good shot with the 50 caliber rifle. With, with, with the 308 Remington 700, with the scope I've got that I bought it like 15 years ago when a Dallas SWAT team guy sold it to me. And it, it just, it's like a laser beam at 500 yards. I mean, I can just shoot through the same hole if it's not real windy. I'm not like a good sniper with Coriolis and, you know, factoring in wind and all that stuff. But out to about 1,000 yards, I can shoot in about a 5-inch group with the, with the 308. And I think that'll get the job done, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. 308 is, uh, it's an inherently accurate round and um, certainly uh, combat effective out to 1,000. Yeah, but I didn't mean to digress. I didn't mean to digress. You were commenting on where the ball is right now. Yeah, so I think we're moving the ball. You know, one thing that the last comment you made before we went to break uh, about it was kind of the negative thing, you know, that really nailed it. That brought me back to I'd made, I got some notes in front of me, and we've kind of been, I've kind of missed a lot of them. That brought me back to Treasure Map. Can we go back to that first? Yeah, let's do that. So, you know, if we look at that, when, when we talked about what Talia did and all that access, and then when William Benny talked about being able to get everybody's IMEI, which is basically your electronic telephone or uh, serial number of your phone, um, we also have to realize that every device, Every device that has a NIC, a network interface controller, has a MAC address. Media, it has a media access controller, and it has a hexadecimal address associated with that. And that's hardwired into an EPROM. You know, it's hard-coded. It can be changed, but it's hard-coded. Now, if what he said, if they go out and they actually are able to audit the everything, and know what, where, and, and, you know, all those devices exist and, and where those IP addresses physically are, they take that data and they store it at, uh, you know, Utah, Fort Meade, wherever. So you were talking about what we have to fear. That's what our children and our grandchildren and other generations, because the other thing you got to think about is he was talking about persistence. They're not only looking at it, they're storing it. Now, they've just started doing this, and through miniaturization and Moore's Law, you know, things are just going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller, which is going to allow them uh, greater and greater ability to store more and more data for a much greater length of time. And they can also then and corrupt and manipulate the data. What do you make of the point I've been asking, and we'll go back to Treasure Map, about Benny, that they don't look at who's on the NSA network? That I mean, okay, that, now, that is insane. That's this silly assumption that they have that once you've been cleared 
and read on uh, to a specific project or level of security, because there's only three. Um, and then beyond that, you'd be read on to a particular project. Um, so there's an assumption that inside uh, it isn't that way. The funny thing is, that's not the way I knew it. Um, we used to, well, I'll put it this way. We used to watch our guys all the time. Um, I, I can't. I can't go into that, but... Uh, sure, I mean, there's more than one way to skin a cat, and obviously for people that are in the infrastructure itself, you can do whatever you want. I mean, that's like Snowden. I mean, it's like I said, being on the ground almost gives you a better view than being on top of the mountain, doesn't it? Absolutely, because the reality is all that uh, spy equipment is is really a tweaked version of some management suite. So I'm the guy that has the management suite. I'm the guy that can go in and hook up to the craft port or do a RAS session or remote access session and log into that device. And I have a super user uh, administrative uh, password. So I can go in there and it's as if I'm, you know, sitting in front of the device or devices. And you know, I could do it from my smart device as things exist today. Okay, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but, but as a layman, and, and haven't we then built a system that leaves us wide open and is the opposite of something, uh, you know, the, the system claiming that this panopticonic, omnipresent spy grid is to keep us safe? It sounds like we've created the doomsday device. Absolutely. Because of this, well, of exactly what you talk about and what Benny talked about, the really uh, fast, backwards way that we've gone about this. I think it's done nothing but open us up. Um, you know, we talk about the grid. I'll be honest with you. You know, I've I've uh, I've been in every kind of energy facility that exists. The only re reason that the the grid is safe from hacks is because it doesn't connect to the internet. That's right. It's just that physical. The really and aren't the they beginning now to make the grid, quote, go smart? Won't that open it up like Swiss cheese? That's a possibility. And um, I actually have a call in to uh, an engineer I used to work with and uh, at a particular electrical company, and I want to discuss just that with him um, because I heard another uh, little bird mentioned something uh, about actually setting that up, and that's certainly disturbing. Yeah, I've actually seen the trade publications. It's also secret what goes in power plants, and it should be, uh, but it's not secret people in the industries that they're starting to put you know, monitoring systems in and other things uh, for all this energy trading and stuff, and they think that, that that's enough for them to get hacks into the computers and, and i guess that ties uh, it, mm -hmm. oh i'm sorry it, it could be and in reality all the way back to 2000 inside what they call uh power center operations um you're seeing that even to the point that all substations uh now have audio and video surveillance of us the guys that work there or, well, for me, used to work there. Um, we kind of don't like it because there's a lot of things that people don't need to see what we're doing, certainly the security people. So eh, sometimes we have battles about that, but that is definitely happening. And I can tell you uh, from being a native, California is by far the most corrupt uh, Union. Well, that's huge uh, news but, right there. Yeah, we have people selling that all the time, and the security guard's the first level to break down. Are you telling me they have internet-based cameras inside the power plant control rooms, which which you can go to websites that have hundreds of thousands of, of government uh, and, and private access cameras because people didn't change the code when they installed it? Yes. They have, they have internet-based? That's a story right there. 
Wow, that is a horrible security breach. This, I tell you, this is now, crazy. Um, how far they've gone with that, I don't know. But, yeah, it's nuts. Um, and nothing happens. You know, you just, you know, people in my business, we, you know, we live our lives under a microscope. Um, so it's not like, you know, we go around and, and, and nobody knows what we're doing, but to go this far and then to have management, and this is what's happening, kind of like in the healthcare industry, where we have human resources and management controlling these systems, and they know nothing about them. And all they're going to do is think it. Well, we're... we're- in California and in Pennsylvania, they got caught six, seven years ago watching kids on the government-issued laptops, the free laptops that aren't free, that we pay for. And then they just defended that themselves and go, yeah, we're watching girls shower at home with them. Big deal. We call the police because the Skittles look like drugs. I mean, they're just so nonchalant about it. Throughout the industry, um, and this is something that I personally have, significant problem with and uh break that down for us on the other side and then i'm gonna hit this russian bunker news absolutely stay there james knox james knox dark commo uh, on youtube and on twitter just dark commo c-o-m-m-o i'm alex jones infowars.com if you're watching and listening to this transmission you are the resistance the collaborators that have taken over the government do not want this info out spread it all right what i'm going to do is i'm going to tape a special report for the nightly news tonight on Jade Helm and the big picture. Not just this particular operation, but the backdrop of the corruption of the military and our government, the institutionalization of the permanent surveillance uh, tyranny state. And then I'm also going to shoot another special report that'll air tomorrow, because David Knight's doing the show tomorrow. I'm going out to California to speak at Cal Jam. Um, I'm 98% sure I'm going to pull the trigger on surgery next Wednesday. That's not an April Fool's joke. That's when they can do it with the surgeon I want on my hernia that I've had for 14 years. I had been working out in about a year or two and I showed off to a girlfriend that, uh, I guess my wife, I just got about to get married, but one of those rollers, you know, where you roll and she couldn't do one and I did like 15 of them real fast and then do a little tear. Well, now it's just gotten too big. Since I lost all this weight, it's it, it just, uh, the guts are now starting to come out more because when I've got my clothes off, I mean, standing up, now, I have a little bit of a pot belly when I'm sitting down, when I stand up, it's like, bam. I mean, I'm trying to get a six pack, and um, so I've got to, I've got to go do this. I don't know. I'm gonna pray about it because I'm not scared of the surgery, but I also know they like to kill people while they're having surgery. And I'm not saying they would do that. It's a little too obvious, but uh, they've done it to Jim Keith and other people. Um, so I kind of just throw that out there. If they want to come get me, I guess they might try. Uh, but I got to get that done. I got a torn Achilles that's come back a lot. So just pray for me. Pray for me to make the right decision. Uh, I mean, I'll be having the surgery if, if I don't come back, you know, uh, t- uh, Monday or Tuesday. Um, I think I'm just going to have the surgery. I think I'm just going to pull the trigger and get it done because I'm starting to have the intestines stick out, and it's not a lot of fun. You get nauseated when it happens. So I'll cover the Russia thing. Um, I'm going to tape some stuff, and I'm going to tape some stuff tomorrow too. Uh, but um, that's the bottom line on that. Appreciate all your support out there. We're going to have you back up on the nightly news as soon as you're back. It's a little bit better, champ. Uh, But James Knox, in just a minute or two, any other points you'd like to add? Um, You know, actually, I'll tell you this. You know, when Benny mentioned 2.8 million square foot comm center being built at need, um, just off the top of my head, I can think of uh, that should bring up to about 6 million square foot of comm center that, I know about, um, and that's that's a scary thing. Um, you know, one of the things that we could do to, uh, I don't know, I guess, frustrate uh, the powers that be, the NSA. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's right, because I always I always think about how to attack at the Congress level just to get rid of it. We should do that, but also we should frustrate it and degrade it because it's criminal. That's a great point. How do you block this and protect yourself? Do a FOIA request on yourself to to the NSA, to the FBI, to the CIA. You know, make these people do their job. 
They're, they're trying not to allow FOIA requests. Let's overwhelm them. Uh, you know, we need, I, I think we need to teach. Uh, you know, we made a real mistake when we did this, when we opened this up and we put this infrastructure in. But we need to remember that it's our infrastructure. This, you know, public dollars paid for this. So we need to take it back. But again, um, I think anything that we can do to get them to realize that they are, in fact, servants and they took an oath. Uh, things like, you know, a FOIA request, anything that you see, you know, they, they see something, report something, do it. But report the stupidest things you see because they're going to have to use resources and go out and look for it. That's right. They so want us know, all tattling on each other. They want us to see something. We, I mean, we call Homeland Security about the ammo bans, about, uh, you know, government drills, you know, training to shoot targets of kids. Absolutely. Just jam their spy grid tattling on them. Yeah, because I, I think I, I think the more people that and be nice, you know, there's nothing to be gained by, you know, attacking these people. But if we go out there. And, and we talk to them. Sure, we let them know we're awake. Absolutely. Right. The minions aren't the problem, but we need to let them know and their bosses know. Thank you so much. I'm going to do five minutes of overdrive. Appreciate our guest. Infowars.com forward slash show. You want to see the overdrive. God bless you all. The average person's life is filled with unexpected challenges. Unlock the energy it takes to defeat these daily beasts with super male or super female vitality, specifically designed to assist the body in regulating proper hormone balance to create superior vitality in males and females. Supercharge and conquer your world at InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139.